This is our first example for the one sample sign test. Let's have a look at the example. The lifetime in errors of a random sample of 10 light bulbs is taken from a large batch produced by the extra long factory after an expensive machine overhaul. The lifetimes were measured to be, and there we have our lifetimes. Before the overhaul, the median lifetime was 500 errors. Use a sign test at the 5% significance level to test the hypothesis that the median length of light bulb, median length of life of a light bulb is greater than 500 errors after the overhaul. So this question is specifying for us to use a sign test. And we have been given one set of data and we've been given a previous median value to compare it to 500 errors. So with any hypothesis test, we follow our six steps. We write out our hypotheses. We state if it is one or two tailed and the significance level. We calculate the test statistic, find the critical region and compare and conclude. So let's start with the hypotheses. With any hypothesis test, we need a null and an alternative hypothesis, H0 and H1. And for a one sample sign test, we are using eta. Eta is this Greek letter here. It's an N where the right hand side is elongated and it represents the population average. We can use mu for questions that are talking about the mean, but most of these questions will talk about average or median. So we're going to use eta just to be on the safe side. In this question, we are looking at what happened before the overhaul. Before the overhaul, the median lifetime was 500 errors. So my null hypothesis is going to state that that value hasn't changed and eta is still 500 or 500 errors. My alternative hypothesis needs to look at what we're being asked for in the question. So we're still going to use eta, but this time we're going to either use not equal to, greater than or less than. So reading that final sentence, it wants to know if the median is greater than 500 errors. After they've had this overhaul, they want to see if the machine has improved the length of the life of the light bulbs. So we want it greater than 500 errors. Next up, we have step two and step three, where we're looking if it's one or two tailed and the significance level. As our alternative hypothesis is greater than 500, that means we're only looking at the upper tail in this question, and therefore this is a one tail test. It states in the question that it is a 5% significance level, but remember if it doesn't tell you, you should always assume 5% as it says on the front of the paper. Next, we calculate the test statistic. So there's a few steps to follow when calculating the test statistic. The first one is we're going to calculate the sign difference for each piece of data from the population average. Now this is a little bit more than you actually need to do for the sign test, but it's good practice to do this in case you then have to do a Wilcoxon later on. I'd always recommend calculating the difference because it's only going to take you an extra minute. So let's work out the difference for each of these 10 light bulbs compared to 500 because that was the median. So the first one is 23 above 500. Then we have 56 above. This one was 178 hours above, then 71 hours below, 58 above, 2 below, 101 below, 15 above, 55 above, and 199 above. So those are my signed differences. And then my next step is I need to count the number of positive and negative signs. So for my own benefit, I've just written if they're plus or minus underneath. I could have just done that for this particular question. But like I say, it is helpful to work out the differences just for further questions. So looking at those, I can see that I have got seven pluses and I have three minuses. And then my test statistic depends on H1. So for this particular question, we were looking at what was over 500. So I'm only looking at how many plus signs there are. So my test statistic for this question is seven. 
Moving on then to the critical region. Now, in my opinion, this is the most awkward one to follow because it doesn't quite sit the same as a lot of the other ones that we work out. But it can be done quite easily once you've had a bit of practice. So for the critical region, I need to make this statement. If H0 is true, then the probability that that average is above 500 is exactly the same that it's below 500. And that is because I am saying if H0 is true, then it is equal to 500. So the probability of it being above or below has got to be exactly the same, and therefore that is a half. And all of a sudden, because I've created this probability, I can use the binomial distribution. So I'm going to use a binomial distribution where n is 10, because I've got 10 data values here, and p is 0 0.5. And for every sign test that you do, p will always be 0 0.5. So I can get the probabilities from my statistical tables, or I can get them from my calculator. And I'm just going to create some probabilities. So I'm going to put a few on the screen here. So because I'm using this um, symmetry of 0 0.5, I can say the probability x is less than or equal to 0 is the same as the probability that x is greater than or equal to 10. They are equivalent. And getting that value from my calculator, I can see that that is 9.7 times 10 to the minus 4. So I'm going to do that for the first few values of x. So less than or equal to 1 is the same as greater than or equal to 9, less than or equal to 2, greater than or equal to 8, etc. And as you can see, I've just calculated those probabilities on my calculator and put them on the screen. Obviously, I can go all the way up to less than or equal to 10 and greater than or equal to 0, but I will never need to go that far. So thinking back to um, steps 2 and 3 in my question, we know that this is a one-tailed test at the 5% significance level, so 0 0.05. So my critical region has got to be any value which has a probability of less than or equal to 0 0.05. Now because this is, the binomial distribution is discrete, I can only have x is 0, x is 1, x is 2, etc. So it's very unlikely I'm going to find an exact probability on a discrete value of 0 0.05. So I've got to find where that cutoff point is. So looking through my data values, I can see that 0 0.05 comes somewhere in between 0 0.0107 and 0 0.0546. Now, I could use interpolation to work out a good estimate of what that would be, but I don't need to. It's discrete, so it's either going to be less than or equal to 1 or less than or equal to 2. So my critical region is anything that is less than that 0 0.05. So my critical region is less than or equal to 1, less than or equal to 0, and then the same, greater than or equal to 9 and greater than or equal to 10. Because this is a greater than question, because we are looking for um, the length of the uh, the length of life of a bulb being greater than 500 hours, I'm looking at the greater than probabilities, and so my critical region is greater than or equal to nine. So finally, we come to the compare and conclude. So for my compare and conclude, I'm going to draw myself a number line going from 0 to n. And for this question, my n is 10. I'm going to draw on my critical value, which was 9. And we said the critical region, because this is a greater than question, is anything above or equal to 9. So I've just shaded that in red, and that becomes my reject zone. I then flick back to my test statistic and find that that was 7. So I'm going to place that on there as well. And as we can see, that doesn't go in the reject zone. So I'm accepting H0. There's not enough evidence to say that we are rejecting H0. So we are accepting H0. So to do my conclusion in context, I'm just going to remind myself of the question. It was asking me to test if the life of a bulb is greater than 500 hours. I am accepting H0. My H0 said that the median is 500 hours. So I don't have enough evidence to confirm that hypothesis. Therefore, there is no significant evidence to suggest that the median length of a life of a bulb is greater than 500 hours after the overhaul. 
Now, looking at that data, you would say 7 out of 10 actually were above. But we're saying that that is not enough evidence. I needed 9 or 10 that were above to say that they are correct.